So we were continuing with the derivation of general heat conduction equation in a solid. Now in our previous class, we have derived that equation that is given in equation number one. It is somewhat restricted from a general equation in the sense that it it assumes that the material is an isotropic material such that the thermal conductivity does not change with direction. If it is an orthotropic material where the direction along x, y, z are different as kx, ky, kz, then it would have been kx here del del y, ky, del del z, kz. But at the same time, this indicates a few things. Let me tell you what are those things. That this is an equation that is valid for a three-dimensional heat flow. When the heat flows along x, y, and z direction because of temperature variation along x, y, and z. That is indicated by the nature of this equation because as we see there is a temperature gradient along x, temperature gradient along y, and temperature gradient along z. In a certain problem, the temperature gradient along a particular direction may not be present or may be negligible. In that case, suppose in a particular case, the temperature does not change much with y. In that case, this term will be absent because it is negligible. That will come to later on. For the time being, let us concentrate on where we can apply this thing. In this form, as it is in this form, we can apply this equation for heat flow in three direction for a material that is isotropic, for which case the conductivity is same irrespective of the direction. But at the same time, it also indicates that this equation is valid for a case where k is varying along x, k is varying along y, k is varying along z. So we can say that this equation is valid for heat flow in a non-homogeneous substance where the conductivity may be space dependent, where the conductivity may be coordinate dependent because the material may be homogeneous in nature where the conductivity can vary along x, y, z. And also this conductivity can vary along x, y, z because of another thing also. Even if it is a homogeneous substance, in some case, if the in a particular case where the range of temperature, if it is very large, if you are dealing with a problem where the body undergoes a large range of temperature, that is the lowest temperature and the highest temperature, they are wide apart. In that case, because of that large range of temperature, <coughs> the conductivity at the location where the temperature is the least may be quite different from the conductivity at some other location where the temperature is highest. So, in such problem, where the temperature ranges over a large change of value, in those cases, the conductivity also may undergo substantial change of value because of the fact that in many cases, conductivity is, in almost all cases, the conductivity is, it, it depends on temperature. So as the temperature ranges over a large value, then conductivity also can be some substantial differ, substantially different at different x, y, z. So it is not that this is a case where it, we can apply it for a non-homogeneous substance. We can also apply it for a homogeneous substance. But in this case, as it indicates, 
case changing with x because of maybe not because of different chemical composition but because of the fact that conductivity may be temperature dependent so because as x changes the temperature changes so conductivity also changes with x that's why if we keep it inside this bracket of this derivative then it indicates that conductivity is different at different x maybe because of non homogeneity of the material or maybe because of a temperature dependent conductivity so this is a case of heat conduction in three dimension with variable conductivity and this term indicates the rate of heat generation per unit volume now again this is a term that we call it as a, sometimes we call it as a source term it is not necessarily source term means it will evolve heat there may be a case where it can also absorb heat in that case it will appear as a negative type of thing and in some case this term may not be present at all in many cases that we deal with there may not be any internal heat generation term at all there may not be any source or sink term at all so in those cases this also this term also will be absent but otherwise these three terms they represent 3d heat conduction with temperature or with variable conductivity and there may be a provision for heat generation internal heat generation and what is the cause for the heat generation there may be many different reasons for heat generation that we have mentioned in our previous class and the term on the right hand side it indicates how the temperature is changing with time now there may be a case where because of heat flow we are taking the case for a heat flow situation we are studying heat transfer so there is heat flow and because of heat flow the the energy content of a body may change with time the energy content of a body may fall with time or the energy content of the body may increase with time so whenever there is a energy content change of the body then it will be reflected in terms of temperature change of the body with respect to time so this term represents that thing that how the temperature of the body at a particular point wherever we are considering this differential equation how it is changing with time and this again will appear for cases where there is unsteady heat transfer what is unsteady heat transfer where the heat transfer is changing with time and how do we know heat transfer is changing with time we can measure heat transfer can see also if we have a knowledge about how the temperature is changing then if we can if we can record that thing then if we see that at a particular point at any point inside the body of interest if we see that temperature is changing with time that is also an indication that there is a change of heat transfer with time so whenever a the temperature inside the body at any point inside the body the temperature changes with time that also implies that the heat transfer rate also changes with time and this class of problem is called unsteady state problem or transient problem and when the temperature and the heat transfer rate it does not change with time we call those problems as steady state problem so if we if we consider an unsteady problem there this term would be present which will take care of the unsteadiness of the problem whereas if we are dealing with a steady state problem then we can we can simplify this term or we can eliminate this term and we can set it as equal to zero so for a steady state problem this term will be absent and for an unsteady state problem this will be present similarly for a problem with internal heat generation this term will be present 
and for a problem where there is no internal heat generation, this term will be absent. Similarly, if we deal with a problem where it is a steady state, uh, it is a three-dimensional problem where the heat flows in all the three directions of coordinate, then we will got to consider all these three terms. Whereas, if because of some reason, we will explain that later on, if because of some reason, if you observe or if you can infer that the temperature does not vary much along J, then we can neglect this term, the third term, and then the equation will simplify to the first term, del del x of k del t del x, and the second term, that is del del y of k del t del y. So for a case where the temperature does not change much along Z, or it, if it does not change at all along Z, then we can eliminate this term, and only these first two terms will be retained, then it will be called a case of a 2D heat transfer problem. And extending this thing, if you observe that the temperature does not change much or at all with Y and it does not also change with Z, then we can neglect the second term, we can neglect the third term, so the equation simplifies to dealing with the first term, so that this equation then will be del del x of k del t del x, these two terms are absent plus g dot is equal to rho c into k del t del time. So depending on the nature of the problem, we can simplify this equation so that we can, we can set aside the less important terms or the non-contributing terms or the negligible terms and we can drop out those terms so that the equation becomes easier to solve. And if we take that simplified equation, we will solve and if you get an answer, you will see that even if you consider all the complexities, the answer does not change much. So to make the, our objective will be to make the problem as simple as possible, yet we should not lose the accuracy of the end result. Because ultimately we are working for some objective of getting some result with certain degree of accuracy. Now, to what degree of accuracy we require, it again depends on the criticality and the nature of the problem. Okay, suppose the temperatures are of the order of say hundreds. There, we need not to take maybe five place after decimal. Maybe one place after decimal is good enough. Or maybe even if we don't take any value after decimal, when we deal with temperatures in the range of say, 0 to 200 degrees centigrade. Then whether we call a temperature, whether we calculate a temperature 5.1 or 5, it doesn't matter. We calculate a temperature as 150.7 or 150, it may not matter much. So whether it will matter or will not matter, that we have to apply our judgment and can take that degree of accuracy. And to achieve that accuracy, we may not require to consider all the terms into our complexity. And we, we have to develop a judgment that which terms we can neglect for which type of situation. As I said, if it is a 2D problem, then we can keep the two terms and can neglect the third dimension. If it is a 1D problem, then we can keep only one dimensional variation. We can neglect the other two dimension. If it is a problem with no internal regeneration, we can neglect the source term. If we are dealing with a steady state problem, then on the whole, we can drop this term out of this equation. So what we have to do is that we have to simplify the equation up to the extent where the problem can take us without losing accuracy. And in those cases, if we take the full things, then it will only reflect our ignorance about how to simplify the problem, our ignorance about the relative magnitude of the different terms. If we can judge that one particular term is negligible or insignificant in comparison to other terms, we should not deal with that term so long as we can get a fair degree of accuracy of the end results. So this is about the general 
equation except that it is valid for isotropic substances. Now we have talked about certain simplification, the but one thing that we will discuss is that what will happen if the body that we consider is a homogeneous one so that the material composition is the same at throughout the domain of interest. By domain of interest we mean that the range of values of x within which this body stands, the range of values of y, range of values of z and the time range up, up to which we are trying to study this thing. Normally the time will range from 0 to time is equal to 0 to some value, maybe 5 seconds, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, so long as we require to see or observe or study this body. Now, if the body is homogeneous, then there is a possibility that the temperature, then the conductivity may be uniform. May be uniform, why I am telling is that even if, with a, if you, even if we are dealing with a homogeneous body, even then, if one point of the body is at a very low temperature, another part of the body is at a very high temperature, then we can we may observe a significant difference in conductivity at the point where the temperature is very low and at the point where the temperature is very high. In the, this type of situation, we may go through a case of large, where we may go through a large range of temperature, we may see that even if the body is homogeneous in chemical composition, but still then the conductivity may change significantly from point to point because of a large range of temperature variation. But that may not be the case in all and each and every problem. In many problems, we may have to deal with a temperature range that is quite, quite narrow. The minimum and the maximum temperatures, they may not vary over a large range of value. Maybe the minimum temperature may be 50 and the maximum may be 80, 100, something like that. And in that case, we even if we measure the conductivity at these different points, starting from the temperature, minimum temperature to maximum temperature, we may see that within that limited range of temperature, the conductivity may not vary much. So, the, what we can what we can do is that in that case because the conductivity is not very much not varying much because of limited range of temperature and also because of the fact that it is a homogeneous body then what we can do is that we can assume a constant conductivity problem and can bring the conductivity term out of this differential so for cases with constant thermal conductivity, we can, we need not to keep this under the differential. We can take it simply out, this conductivity, we can take it out of this differential. And when you can do, if we are dealing with a case where conductivity is constant, and when we can assume conductivity as constant, is that when the body is a homogeneous one, and also the range of temperature is not much wider. So for a limited range of temperature in a homogeneous body, we can simply take it out in this conductivity out of this differential. So if we take it out of the differential, then K will come out over here, K will come out over here, K will come out over here. If we take common and divide both sides by K, then what we'll get is this second equation. This is valid for a constant conductivity case where it becomes del x of del, del x means nothing but del 2t del x square, del 2t del y square, del 2t del z square. So it is sometimes called as a Laplacian of t. So as a, a particular mathematical operation known as a Laplacian transformation, a Laplacian operator is applied on this thing, which means del 2 del x square plus del 2 del y square plus del 2 del z square operating on temperature it is an operator that is operating on a scalar quantity that is temperature temperature is a scalar quantity it has some value doesn't have any direction so because we have divided both sides by k it becomes divided of k but now that we have g dot by k and 
also you have rho C, rho CP or rho C by K. Now this term rho C by K, we'll see that as a whole, this group of quantities, they have a specific significance. We can think of it as if artificially it is consisting of a number of different properties, but as a whole, in an integrated form, this quantity K by rho CP has some significance. And this is treated as a as a property that is known as thermal divisibility of the material. I'll elaborate this thing. Now this term, so what happens is that rho C by K, it becomes one by K by rho C. So that K by rho C is called the thermal divisibility term. Now, what we are dealing with is a problem that is of conductive nature. That is a heat transfer is taking, by, uh, taking place by means of a mechanism or method or means of thermal conduction. It is also sometimes called as thermal diffusion. We use this term diffusion when if we heat up a particular point and if we allow the heat to spread then without doing anything, then what will happen? The range at high temp the point at high temperature from there the heat will try to spread to the surrounding through a means that is known as diffusion, where the points they do not move, but the energy gets transferred or handed over from one point to another point. And a similarity can be drawn between this problem and a problem, suppose you keep in a cup or in a pot in a pot certain amount of water and gently you place some sweet maybe one uh, particle of sugar into it now what you will see is that what you can taste is that the sweetness of the water in the vicinity of that sugar mass of sugar it will be the sweetness will be more and if you move further away that water may not have any presence of sugar and you may not taste any sweetness in that water. But if you allow some time to settle, then what you can see is that that uh, sugar will dissolve into water and it will try to it will try to diffuse from the region of high concentration of sugar to the region of low concentration of sugar. So what will happen is the sugar will try to diffuse throughout the entire volume so that it will try to attain a equilibrium of sugar concentration throughout the volume. Similarly, if we have a high energy region in some part of a body, it will try to, the high energy will try to get diffused throughout the entire domain so that the entire domain attains some kind of a thermal equilibrium. And this phenomenon will occur, this diffusion phenomenon will continue till the entire body attains a a state of thermal equilibrium such that everywhere the temperature tends to be equal, everywhere the energy tends to be equal. So how it is happening is through a mechanism that we call it as diffusion. Now if it is a thermal energy is diffusing, we call it thermal diffusion. If it is a suppose a chemical is diffusing throughout, suppose again if you take an example of a cup and if you drop a, if you drop a droplet of blue ink, what you see is that locally it is having a high concentration of blueness and far away the water remains crystal clear. But as you allow some time, that blue ink will try to diffuse throughout, independent of the direction, it will try to diffuse in all direction. And gradually what you see is that the entire water, mass of water, attains a uniform level of bluishness that is neither too high nor too low. It tends to be equally distributed. So these examples are examples that you can call it as mass diffusion, whereas the temperature driven energy diffusion is called the thermal diffusion. Now, so the phenomenon of diffusion means spreading of something in a gradual way because of a potential difference and that requires no movement of the particles. The particles they remain as it is in their position, but the particular species may diffuse all through 
क्वेटेन ए स्पीसीज इक्विब्रियम और एनर्जी में डिक्यूज ऑल थ्रू क्वेटेन ए थर्मल कंडीशन ऑफ थर्मल इक्विब्रियम दैट विल बी मैनिफेस्टेड इन फॉर्म इन द फॉर्म ऑफ यूनिफॉर्म टेम्परेचर सिमिलरली स्पीसीज यूनिफॉर्मिटी विल अटेन and when it attains that uniformity you can see the color is the same the taste is the same the chemical composition is the same now this phenomenon of of trying to attain or trying to spread with time that is called a diffusion phenomenon and so that the property that is responsible for this uh, time wise attainment of uniformity that is through a property known as thermal divisibility now this is something that is connected to a time wise attainment trying to attain to a change what is that change suppose you have a uniform water you drop a liquid of blue ink so you have created a disturbance now that local disturbance it will try to spread throughout so that the disturbance is uniform all through it attains an equilibrium suppose you have a body of a cup of water you heat up locally at some location by by inserting an immersion heater locally the water will be heated and if you withdraw that heater then the local heating it will try to spread out the local energy high energy region will try to spread out so the entire region attains an uniform energy which can be indicated through a uniformity of temperature now this 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 attempt will go on as long as there is a difference in temperature as long as there is a difference in the energy content at different point so the whole objective is to attain uniformity or equilibrium condition and this will happen in a limited period of time from the time when you initiate some disturbance up to the point where the material tries to attain an uniformity and how slowly it will happen or how fast it will happen it depends on the value of this quantity as a whole that we call it as the thermal divisibility for example if there is a body that is a high thermal divisibility then what you can infer is that suppose if you have a body that has a high thermal divisibility so high that it at it it almost reduces to zero so that the whole of this term goes out so what you can say for this type of cases where the body has a high thermal divisibility then even if you carry even if you create a local disturbance in the body immediately the disturbance will be spread throughout the body and it will attain equilibrium to a change condition almost instantaneously so how quickly it will happen how quickly it will readjust to any kind of disturbance it depends on the magnitude of the thermal divisibility property if a body has a high thermal divisibility it will try to readjust itself to the changed condition very quickly whereas if you have a body that has a low thermal divisibility then it will take a long time to adjust itself to that newly created disturbance disturbance will it will try to make it uniform but how much time it will be requiring to attain a second level of uh, uh, equilibrium that depends on what is the magnitude of alpha if you have a high value of alpha the disturbance will be readjusted to a new equilibrium condition very quickly whereas if you have a low value of thermal divisibility it will take a long time so thermal divisibility is also a measure of the inverse of the thermal inertia of the body so the high thermal divisibility means a, it adjusts very rapidly so it has a low thermal inertia on the other hand if there is a body that has a low value of alpha it will take a long time to adjust so that it has a high thermal inertia so thermal inertia and thermal divisibility they are they are just reciprocal of each other kind of thing the body with a high thermal divisibility has a low thermal inertia and body with a low thermal divisibility has a very high inertia to any change to readjust itself 
and there is a significance of this term and this term will appear in cases only when we are considering a body that is going through a temporal change of state that is a body that is going through a time wise change of state a body that is going through a change of temperature with time but we may deal with many problem where the body is is participating in heat transfer but no point in the body the temperature is changing with time if no point of the body the temperature is changing with time if all points in the body they do not that their temperatures do not change with time we call them a steady state problem and if there is a steady state problem then this whole term becomes equal to zero so it doesn't matter whether the body has a high thermal diffusivity or low thermal diffusivity because the term that is associated with this transient part or unsteady term this value is connected to this term so what will happen so long as the body is a steady state problem we are dealing with a steady state problem this becomes equal to zero then it becomes immaterial whether the value of alpha is 5 or 2 or 3 or whatever value so this will come into picture this will have a significant role into the whole process of try, trying to attain a equilibrium condition only when we are going through a change of state only when we are going through a unsteady state condition then only it will have some meaning to play a meaningful role into the whole process whereas for steady state problem it it is immaterial whether the value of alpha is some value or some other different value now let us examine what is the unit of this alpha unit of alpha will be equal to what is the unit of this this watt per watt per meter kelvin and what is the unit of this this is kg per meter cube and this is kilojoule per kg kelvin so this kg per meter cube and kilojoule per kg kelvin uh, kg and kg will cancel so it will be what it will be kilojoule per meter cube kelvin and it is watt per meter kelvin that watt per meter kelvin means joule per second meter kelvin that what is joule per second so this has a unit of joule per second meter kelvin this has a unit of joule per meter cube kelvin so what will happen the joule part and joule part will cancel kelvin can will cancel and here per meter and here per meter cube so ultimately it will become meter square and here joule per second that second will remain so it will be meter square per second you can work out in your yes uh, sir so it will have a unit of meter square per second per second and what i said is that when you study heat transfer will come across properties that actually introduces the sense of time for example k this property k thermal conductivity it governs how fast the heat transfer by conduction will take place and that is also embedded in the nature of the unit if you see it is what that is joule per second so per second that thing comes to this property conductivity and also if you see this alpha here also it is meter square per second so this time involvement of time comes into picture in this subject along with the properties like conductivity diffusivity all these things which are you will not see the involvement of these properties when you have studied thermodynamics these properties were not there so that it they, so such that they could control the rate part we had to deal with in thermodynamics properties that is devoid of any presence of per second type of thing now so up to this and if you further simplify this this equation has a name that is called fourier bio equation similarly this is called a poisson equation we are aware of this thing when this will be valid let us discuss when this will be valid this equation when we can apply this equation can somebody tell please that when in which situation can you specify the whole situation where we can apply this equation this will become applicable sir steady state and constant thermal conductivity and three dimensional 
I'm three dimensional yes. So in the heat transfer phenomenon, takes place over three dimension when the body is under steady state condition and when the conductivity is constant, then we can apply this equation. Remember, always we start with that general equation. That del del x of k del t del x plus del del, del, del y of k del t del y del del z. This is a more general form of equation, except again here there is simpli simplification. That is, it is we are assuming that k is direction independent. So it is isotropic. And then if we apply those things that for constant conductive k will come out, steady state, del t, del time will go out like that. And when this will be valid, this term, this equation. This will be valid when the body is going through a heat transfer phenomenon over all the three dimension. Also, there is no heat generation, no internal heat generation. And the body is going through unsteady state condition. So it is an equation that is valid for cases where there is no internal heat generation with constant conductivity and the heat transfer phenomenon is taking place. All the three coordinate direction also is changing with time. Unsteady three-dimensional constant conductivity heat on heat. Then we, when it is a heat, when it is a unsteady problem. We call it is a heat diffusion phenomenon. Uh, the 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 more uh, formal term will be heat diffusion. Okay, so diffusion this term will try to utter when you deal with an unsteady kind of situation. And if there is no internal heat generation and the body is under steady state, then and also the conductivity is constant, then there will be no heat generation term, no unsteady state term. It, it simplifies to the simple Laplace equation. And we can have still further simplification. For example, if we have a wall, if we have a wall where wall means some a, a three dimensional geometry that has a dimension which we call it as thickness, the thickness is much smaller compared to the width and height of the wall. Walls are characterized by a large width, large height, and lower thickness. This lower thickness is in comparison to the height and width of the geometry. So it is a uh, three-dimensional uh, shape that has a low thickness and high width, high height, large, large width and large height. And the thickness is comparatively smaller. Now, if we see if it is particularly an exterior wall of a house, then during the summer, the outer surface may tend to be much hotter, and the interior surface may not be so much hot. So, what will happen when there is a temperature difference between the exterior surface of the wall and the interior surface of the wall? Then, what will happen? Heat will tend to diffuse through the thickness of the wall from the outside surface towards the inside surface. So heat energy will try to travel from the outer surface of the wall towards the inner surface of the wall, particularly during the summer time condition. Because the outer surface is hotter, outer environment is hotter, and the inner environment may be colder. If it is colder, then the inner surface wall will be colder. And heat will try to flow from the outer hotter surface to the inner colder surface. Now, the heat will predominantly flow along the direction of thickness. The heat will not flow along the direction of the width of the wall. It will not flow along the di direction of the height of the wall. It will flow only at Major part of the heat will flow only across the thickness of the wall. What I am why I am telling major is that there may be a local heat flow near the edge of the wall. There are four other edges of the wall. Now near the edges, 
it may flow in along y along z but those flow of heat they are very small compared to the compared to the magnitude of the heat flow across the thickness the rate of heat transfer across the thickness it will be much larger in and the rate of heat transfer along y and along z they may be much smaller insignificant so we can tell that q along y is zero q along z is zero and when you talk of zero it doesn't mean mathematically zero it whenever we have a negligible amount we can tell it as zero so q along y being negligible we can set it as zero q along z being negligible we can set it as zero and q along x may not be is not negligible so you can't set it as zero so we have a case where q along x is taking place but q along y and q along z is zero this is so because t along x is significantly changing but t along y and t along z they are not changing so in that case and as we can very well tell that inside the wall there is no internal heat generation so that g dot term is not present and if the outside temperature remains steady over the time interval that we are considering it is true that the outside wall temperature also will change over the duration of the whole day early morning it may not be so hot but as the time progresses from morning towards noon you see the hotness of the outer surface becomes higher and higher so so long as the outer surface temperature will change the inner surface temperature will change the whole phenomenon will change with time but if we take a small interval of time say we are observing it between the interval of 720 to 730 now if we measure the temperature at 720 and if we measure the temperature at 730 it does not change much so depending on the interval of our interest there may be cases where the outer surface is not changing much the inner surface temperature is also not changing much with time then the in between points also the temperature will not change with time see the outer surface the boundary conditions are steady with time that is the outer surface temperature inner surface temperature they remains invariant with time then the in between points also their temperature also will not vary with time and as a whole the heat transfer rate across the wall thickness also will not change with time so we can deal with a problem where it is a steady state problem there is no variation of conductivity there is no internal heat generation and also the heat conduction is taking place in one direction such that t because t is not changing with time y t is not changing with z t is also not changing with time there is no internal heat generation k is constant so the equation simplifies to d to t dx square is equal to zero and we should not forget to then convert this partial differential into an ordinary differential it will be it will not be any more del to t del x square because t is only dependent on x it will be written as d to t dx square whereas the moment t is dependent on more than one independent variable it may be a, it it may vary with x and time it may vary with x and y like that then we have to take this partials but when t is only changing with x then we can write d to t dx you should write d to t dx square is equal to zero in that case so let us stop at this point because i am feeling a bit tired okay so we'll continue if you have some question let me take some two three minutes rest and then or otherwise you can take some rest and again we can proceed let me take some four minutes rest okay yes if you have question, if you have question you can ask me Do you have any question? No, sir.
sir how can we say that there is uh, there will be no thermal diffusion during steady state no i did not say there will be no thermal distribution first of all what i am talking is temperature distribution by distribution i mean that something is changing with coordinate system okay now under steady state it may it it may vary along x y z under steady state it may vary along x and y may not vary with z under steady state it may not vary with y and z also but it may vary with x so if a body is such that its temperature is not changing with time we call it under steady state sir i said about thermal diffusion by thermal distribution we mean temperature distribution no sir thermal diffusion 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 uh, what is your question thermal diffusion sir thermal diffusion steady state means what steady state means a body where the temperature is not changing why the temperature is not changing is because its energy content is not changing the energy content at a particular point if the energy content changes then its temperature will be changing if the energy content falls its temperature will fall if the energy content rises its temperature will rise now when the body is under steady state that means that it is it is uh, its temperature is not changing with time that means its energy content is not changing with time that means what is happening is that whatever it is coming onto it is delivering the same amount to the next layer so it is just looking as a onlooker without participating it is just like a what do you call conveyor he receives one letter and gives the letter to the next man kind of thing so diffusion means when you have a high energy content you are trying to distribute to, to the next layer your own energy is falling and the next layer energy is rising something like that now in this type of steady state case what is happening you are just accepting the energy from a previous layer and giving the energy to the next layer without changing your thing it will be more clearer when we take an actual case so far we have not taken or dealt with a physical case we'll show that uh, what is happening in heat transfer under steady state is that it is receiving energy it is giving energy but the receipt of energy and the giving of the energy when these two balances exactly then there is no change of its state that is why it is called steady state then we do not call it a diffusive phenomenon diffusion will take place where a high thing is being distributed towards a region of lower same thing if you have a concentration of some mass at a point higher concentration will tend to distribute that to the neighborhood so its own concentration will decrease and the neighborhood concentration will increase and it will appear it will ultimately come to a state where the concentration becomes uniform all through then there is no further diffusion diffusion is a temporary transient phenomenon that will occur only during that unsteady phase of the body and that unsteadiness is also is towards because of an attempt to distribute the thing to come to an equilibrium condition so to attain equilibrium it is trying to readjust or redistribute the things then that phase is called the unsteady part and the phenomenon through which it is happening is through diffusion okay sir now next thing is that the the way we have written this equation in is in cartesian coordinate system okay rectangular cartesian coordinate system now this may be convenient if we are dealing with a cubical shaped bodies like the brick like the wall but not necessarily in all cases we have to deal with that type of shape of the body many times we may have to deal with a cylindrical body sometimes we may have to deal with a spherical body now when we are dealing with a cylindrical body it will be inconvenient to deal with the problem if we treat the whole thing in terms of the rectangular cartesian coordinate system whereas it will be much more convenient if we can rewrite that equation in terms of cylindrical coordinate system similarly when we are dealing with a spherical body it may be a hollow sphere it may be a solid sphere 
and there it will be convenient to write the whole set of equation in form of spherical coordinate system so what you can do if we try to develop the whole equation through a uh, what you call cylindrical system you can try to attempt that thing let us take it as an assignment to try to rederive this thing you can do two things one you can you can have the coordinate transformation that is x y z you can convert it in terms of r phi z or you can draw the same kind of energy incoming going out kind of thing so that what we can do is that here suppose some q at phi is coming q dot at phi is coming here q dot at phi plus d phi is going out say here q z is entering here q z plus d z is going out like that and what else here there is q r is coming here q dot r is r plus d r is going out similar to x y z and x plus delta x y plus delta y z plus delta z here also you can assume that we take a, a elemental control volume with this phi r and z as the cylindrical coordinate system so through this phase q dot at phi is entering and through this phase q dot at phi plus delta phi is going out not d phi delta phi is going out similarly here q dot z is entering through this top phase q dot z plus delta z is going out and through the back phase q dot r is entering and through this q dot r plus delta r is going out and then there may be internal heat generation with small g dot into what is this dz into dr into r d phi is the volume of this element then we have rho cp into del t del time into volume that type of thing and through that you can derive from the basics shall you take this thing as an assignment the cylindrical system of energy uh, equation and the spherical system of energy equation so you have today is tuesday we'll have our next class on friday in between you will have time to derive this equation the energy equation in cylindrical coordinate system and also in uh, spherical coordinate system and then we'll start with cases in cartesian coordinate system with cylindrical coordinate system because we may have to deal with flow through pi heat flow across the thickness of a pi because if you see any boiler structure boilers the heat transfer is taking place between a fluid flowing through inside the pipe maybe water is flowing inside the pipe and outside you may have a hot flue gas the boiler in the boiler you are burning a fuel liberating heat so that it is producing some kind of flue gas that is at a high temperature so that across the wall of the boiler tube it will flow in through the thickness of the water tube from the high temperature flue gas to the low temperature water so it will start rising in temperature and ultimately it will boil so that type of heat transfer will take place across a cylindrical system which is an which is an example of that may be a hollow pipe or a pipe or a tube similarly we may have a spherical vessel where we can heat it heat up the vessel from outside similarly with the help of a high temperature medium inside the vessel spherical vessel we may have something that where we are transferring the heat it may be a chemical reactor so sometimes also you have to deal with a cylindrical shaped body or a spherical geometry body so we must know what are the forms of those things it is very difficult to remember this thing but i think if you practice a number of times then the whole equation will become embedded in your mind throughout your life so the only way to make it permanent is you repeatedly derive the same thing a number of times then whole thing will become you can you will be able to visualize the equation even if you forget memory through mentally you can you can instantaneously write the equation so i tell you that uh, you please try to derive this equation in spherical coordinate system also in a cylindrical coordinate system then we will then we will go for solution of actual real life simplified problems okay so with this we'd like to stop you have your class next period
today. Roll 50. 50. I am making a roll call. 50 is absent. What has happened to this shop? 51. Present, sir. 52. Present, sir. 50. 